Hey everyone, my name is Billy Link. I'm the CEO of HB Auto, and today we're doing a buyer's guide on the 2009 to 2013 Ferrari California. So what we're gonna cover is pretty much all the pros, all the cons, any maintenance on the car that you're gonna run into, any issues that are known, and just kind of give you a tour of what the car is like and how it operates. So we'll just do a quick walk around the car. So this is actually one of my favorite Ferraris. The cool thing about this car is it's somewhat mass produced, which is nice because that means Ferrari obviously put a little more time and energy into perfecting the car, making sure it's a little bit more reliable because quite a few of these cars are in some cases daily driven. If not daily driven, they're driven quite a bit uh, by the owners. So one of the nice things about the car is obviously the design, they did really good with it. Some people, you know, aren't a big fan of the design, but I think on this specific spec, the design's awesome. It's got ADV1 wheels, it's been lowered, it's a black on black with a carbon ceramics with the yellow calipers, which is a great look on this car. And then also, it has the shields, which is really nice, and it's factory. You can tell it's factory because it's recessed into the fender. If it's not factory, it won't be recessed in. So that's always a good thing to look at. And it's also really important because a lot of people don't want this car unless it's factory. That's an important feature to have. So we'll take a look on the inside of the car. This car has an awesome spec on it. It's got the carbon inserts, yellow DVH stitching, carbon handle. Um, really, really great spec. You don't normally see them spec this way. This right here is simple. It just controls your mirrors. That's for the left. That's to fold it in. That's for the right. This car actually has a really unique seat option. I always refer to these as the Scuderia seats. Same thing that comes in the Scuderia, except these are electric for the folding mechanism. Now the sliding forward and backwards is still controlled by a handle. And then to pull up, seat rolls forward. And you can see in the back seat of the car, beautiful carbon backing here. Um, extremely nice combination on this interior. They really did an exceptional job with it. So we'll just start with the basics. This is your light switch. You can leave an auto, parking lights off running lights, full lights, pretty pretty simple. This controls your left side of the dash display here. This is what actuates the telescoping steering column here. And then we're gonna straighten up the wheel so you guys can see. So that's obviously the engine start button. You have to have the key in in non position. This controls the engine performance and suspension settings right here with comfort, sport, and uh, basically traction control and everything off on the Manatino, as you'd call it. The uh, entertainment system here, this car has navigation, all those good features. Um, HVAC controls here, automatic, reverse, launch mode, which I wouldn't recommend launch mode. Um, if you do it, I would do it just a couple times because it is extremely hard on the dual clutch transmission in these cars. This is the convertible top open and close window switches here. And with that being said, we're gonna go and open the top so we get a little bit better lighting in here so you can see everything. So that pretty much covers the inside. I mean, we've got the glove box here as well. Not a lot of space in there, but you know, there's some. Back here is the rear seat. Um, there's really not much room here. I honestly don't know why these cars have them. Some of these cars I see have seat belts and rear seat pads. Some of them don't. If I had to guess, it's probably just for insurance purposes, trying to cut down cost of ownership on these cars. And then we've got, uh, this is rather unusual. Um, they put the lock and unlock button right here. So this is your passenger airbag indicator. This is for tow mode, parking sensors, interior dome light, and then the right and left light. Um, obviously you can program your parking garage or garage door opener here. And then this is, you know, the auto dim feature on the, the mirror. With that being said, that pretty much covers the basic fu uh, functions and features of the interior of the car. Um, there's not a lot to it because obviously the experience of driving this car isn't tech. It's the actual driving experience of the car, which is what, you know, the reason why you want a Ferrari. Um, but they have done a couple things to obviously give you more creature comforts. It, even 
uh, with you know that being said, you have a cup holder now, which is quite a uh, would be quite unheard of, you know, ten years ago on a Ferrari. Um, we've went over the interior. Let's uh, let's check out the engine bay and the trunk space. Now, if you love Ferraris, this is always going to be your favorite part. Is the trademark wrinkle red intake valve covers. Uh, basically, this is the F430 engine. A couple revisions. It's got direct injection now. Um, a little bit more horsepower, um, but you know nothing major. It's a great platform. Uh, obviously, it looks great. And aside from that, you know the engine bay is rather clean on these cars. Use a lot of handles here to kind of hide all of the uh, the wiring, electronics, and whatnot. But uh, nevertheless, it looks great. So they keep the battery right here tucked in, um, right underneath the, the intake. Uh, uh, boots here. Uh, this is a jump start port here. You've got a, you know, the power cable. You've also got a ground cable underneath here to attach the jump box to. Although I would never recommend actually jumping one of these cars off because of the intricate electrical systems Ferraris have. You could possibly end up damaging it. So I always recommend just leaving a tender on it. Now, speaking of tender, there is a port uh, in the rear of the car where you can use the factory Ferrari tender. If you're letting this car sit, you should always leave it on a tender. Uh, right here you got your power steering fluid reservoir, your coolant, your engine oil dipstick, which is really interesting because most cars nowadays don't have a dipstick, but Ferrari still retained it. You've got your wiper fluid here and your brake fluid. So that pretty much covers everything on the front of the car. Um, they go in a little bit further detail. You've got your high pressure fuel pumps right here hidden by these covers. You've got the camshaft solenoid sensors here. Um, Obviously, if you look down there, you can see the drive belt, whatnot. So um, that's just a couple of components inside the engine bay. We have uh, the top down here, which you can see. Um, when you have the, the top down, you actually have to have this cover in this set position, or otherwise you can't put the, put the top down. Um, you can move this to give you a little bit more storage space when the top is up. Right here is your tool compartment. You see the fuses right here. Got a tow hook, screwdriver. Um, a lot of people aren't going to recognize this tool. This tool right here uh, allows you to disable the electronic parking brake. So if you ever had an instance where the transmission failed, battery you know, died, what, what have you, that's one way you can actually get the car neutral and move it around and get the car going. And then right here, you know, you can just see there's some, some storage in here and whatnot. Um, Sometimes you'll you'll actually find the owner's manuals back here in these cars, um, but other than that, there's not a hot, whole lot going on back here. This is actually the port for you to access the the gearbox to put it uh, disengage the, the parking brake. So if you ever needed to do that, that's where you would go. So we we spoke briefly about the tender earlier. So if you have the Ferrari tender or the adapter, this is where your plug goes right here. And my recommendation is anytime this car sits for more than a day, you want to keep on a tender. These cars constantly have a parasitic drag on the battery. And if the charge gets to a certain level, basically under 12 volts, it really causes the car to not run very well. It can cause it to run rough, some of the fault lights to come on and just a lot of other issues. So that's a big thing on this car is to keep the tender on it and utilize it as much as possible when it's sitting. Now let's go over some of the common issues, maintenance, things like that you run into with these types of cars. So uh, these, these cars are obviously a lot more reliable than they were 10 years ago. You don't have time and belt services, you don't have engine out services unless you have a major catastrophic issue. So that's the great news about the California and the newer platforms. Um, some of the things to consider on these cars is uh, you do sometimes have a lower sump leak when the cars get a little bit older. Um, it's also a lot more noticeable on the lower mileage cars that these cars tend to develop some leaks at the lower sump. Uh, power steering pump leaks are pretty common. That's actually a common issue with F430 as well. Seems to be common with these cars. Um, you know, see these quite a bit servicing these cars. Uh, gearbox. Uh, Ferrari used to recommend basically replacing the entire gearbox, um, but over time, you know, customers were trying to seek alternatives to spending $40,000 on a gearbox. And they have actually developed a way to disassemble the gearbox, 
replace the sensors or the harness and put it back together and it's a fraction of the price so that's the great news um, aside from that uh, you, you do have some convertible top issues from time to time which is a pretty common thing with any ferrari um, the trick is having the fluids flushed every couple of years having it inspected by a shop that's really familiar with these types of uh, convertible tops on these cars and just looking for any types of leaks or any areas that need to be lubricated that could cause a failure in the future um, other engine issues is on some of the earlier models the crankshafts weren't machined correctly and can cause an engine failure um, I haven't personally seen that many of those uh, but it is you know a possible issue with early model cars now any other issues with the cars uh, pretty much common stuff every once in a while you'll have valve cover leaks uh, you know that's pretty common on any car at some point in life that you're gonna have a leak of some sort um, we have seen some sensor issues and stuff but for the most part these are really good reliable cars now getting into the maintenance you're gonna have to obviously have the annual service done every year we recommend 5,000 mile intervals on the engine oil filter and fluids we don't recommend going to 12,000 miles uh, the fluids start to break down after about 7,500 miles and it's just something we wouldn't recommend so on all of our cars we do the annual service every 5,000 miles or 12 months brake fluid we recommend every two years over 20,000 miles uh, brake fluid is hydrostatic and over time it builds up moisture in it the moisture becomes acidic and can eat up the brake lines uh, from the inside out the seals of the ABS and just cause all kinds of havoc to your brake system so it's just a really cheap preventative maintenance we recommend every two years on these cars just do it you, it, it will definitely save you a lot of headache in the long run power steering fluid pretty much two years 15,000 mile recommendation on these cars um, it, it, I have seen you know if it's done and followed correctly it does help prevent some of the pumps from leaking but generally over time that pump's gonna fail no matter what you do coolant flush that's recommended every three years or 30,000 miles on these cars the reason why you want to do that is because the coolant becomes erosive over time and starts to corrode some of the coolant passages in the engine can create blockages uh, cause hot spots in the cylinders cylinder heads. so we always recommend just a three-year 30,000 mile flush on that nothing too big another thing that I always recommend keep an eye on is the drive shaft I've seen this on quite a few cars where the uh, the joint will actually uh, the seal will break and you'll actually start to lose all the grease in the drive shaft where it connects to the rear yoke going in the gearbox and a lot of times for will actually deny if you have a warranty they'll deny the claim and say oh it's normal it's okay but I've had quite a few experiences where that was the case, where the clients went to Ferrari, they wouldn't do anything, they kept driving and eventually caused drive shaft failure. So that is something you wanna keep an eye on these cars. It can become a problem long-term. So always check those out on your pre-purchase inspections or if you're you know, getting your car serviced, you wanna make sure that's good to go. So with the gearbox, we do recommend the, you know, doing the fluids. It, it will save you a lot of heck in the long run because that clutch is still gonna wear out regardless of, you know, being a, a wet clutch or dry clutch system. Um, generally what we see is about 100 to 120,000 mile life in these cars gearbox as long as the fluid services are done correctly. Um, in some cases you may get more, but that's a, a really good area to expect life-wise out of these. Moving to the interior, the biggest issue I see is sticky buns. It's always been an issue with Ferraris. It hasn't changed. Uh, from time to time, we also see the convertible top and windows buttons failing. Uh, you know, that's not a big deal, but it is something that fails on these cars. I have seen some radio issues from time to time. In fact, this is a really interesting one. I've even seen tack failures. I've only seen in one car, but basically the tack was about 1,000 RPMs off of what the actual rotations per minute was of the engine, and we had to replace the instrument cluster to fix it. Um, another thing too is the leather. Sometimes the leather on these tops will raise up. Um, it's just a, a common issue on these cars because that's real authentic leather and moisture and heat over time causes it to come loose, stretch, shrink. It can be a, an issue, um, especially if the car is on the sun a lot. So we recommend keeping these cars inside, keeping them cool. You know, it's a Ferrari. They need a little extra attention and care, so to speak, to keep them happy. Um, sometimes you also see some issues with the dash leather popping up here and in this area as well. Uh, this car is obviously in a lot better shape than most, but a lot of times you'll actually see the, the leather coming up right here. 
So every 40,000 miles or four years is when the plug services recommend on these cars. Um, aside from that, that's pretty much all the big items on these cars that you have to worry about. Um, they're really well built for the most part. They're a great car, they drive well. Uh, they're very enjoyable. Um, you know, if, if you keep the car long enough at some point, you're gonna have to look at, you know, your carbon ceramic rotors getting replaced. Those should get weighed on every service and they should get measured as well. You probably will go through a couple sets of brake pads. Um, for any reason, if you decide to track this car, I definitely recommend getting some gyro disc and get rid of the carbon ceramic rotors because a couple of track days is gonna do a lot of damage to those. But aside from that, it's a great car. I would highly recommend it. They're built extremely well. They look great. They hold value well, but they're also a great value for the price too, considering what these cars cost new versus what you can pay for them now. And that concludes my review today on the Ferrari California. Every point in this video is something I personally have seen. I try to keep all this stuff based off my own experiences or what we see in our facility as far as repairing these cars. But that's pretty comprehensive. There may be a couple things that we miss, but these are the major sticking points that we see frequently with these cars. Overall, I think it's a great car. If you want a Ferrari and don't want to break the bank with maintenance down the road, I think this is a great option for you. And personally, what, what could you not love about it? It's a beautiful spec on this car. So, so thank you for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Our goal is to give you guys good content. We're enthusiasts and we want to reach out to other enthusiasts and give you guys true, honest feedback on what it's like on these cars. If you liked our video or enjoyed, you know, enjoy our channel, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any requests for content. We would be happy to produce that for you guys. Thank you for watching our video and have a great day.